Hi everyone, thank you for watching this video. My name is Zian Luo, and I'm very glad to have the chance here to present our work on match plan generation in web search with parameterized action reinforcement learning. This work has been done during my internship with my talented colleagues in Microsoft Research Asia and Bing. Match plan generation is the key technology for large-scale search engines. It makes the trade-off between good result quality and short query response time. Search engines use match plans to help retrieve relevant documents from billions of web pages within milliseconds. It's an important but difficult sequential uh, decision-making task uh, with few related works. Let's have a brief look at what match plan generation is like and see why it is very important but difficult. This figure basically illustrates the process of match plan generation. So I'll introduce it sequentially. The input of our system is a query and it outputs the most relevant candidate documents. After preprocessing, multiple posting lists present, representing some different query terms and fields are retrieved from the inverted index system in which the documents are organized in the descending order of quality. The search engine scans the posting lists by executing a match plan which is composed of a sequence of match rules. A match rule defines how the search engine matches a document over a period of time. So it is made up of a discrete match rule type, so for example, rule A, and some several continuous stopping quotas. So uh, the MCC here stands for matched candidate count. Yeah, for sure, uh, different match rules have different execution cost here. So let's think about why this technology is so important. So first of all, it plays an important role in search engine to retrieve top candidates in milliseconds. In addition, it decides the resource allocation for query and it helps to make the trade-off between relevance and efficiency for search engine. But it is a secret for search companies and there's no such publications and there are no open source code. So uh, some open toolkits such as Lucene, Elasticsearch do not have some similar strategies. So this is about the importance of match plan generation and let's look at why this is a very hard problem. So firstly, the system environment is very complex. With the increasing number of match rule types and stopping quota types, it's much more difficult for engineers to design a very good match plan that works well for most queries. And secondly, since the data distribution of the inverted index vary among different machines and over time, it is very challenging for engineers to design different mesh plans for different machines periodically. Moreover, handcrafted static design cannot dynamically revise the mesh plans based on the intermediate system states, such as uh, the relevance score of the uh, current mesh plan, uh, the current mesh documents. Okay, so because of its open loop nature, it is less adaptive to some corner cases. Another difficulty we met is the multiple objects optimization. Uh, because we want to achieve both higher uh, relevance and low latency. So, yeah. Uh, in, in addition, it is a sequential decision-making decision process instead of one-time decision. As we talked before, match plan is uh, composed of a sequence of metro containing uh, discrete metros and continuous quotas. And lastly, the algorithms should be successfully applied in thousands of machines and should be very fast. So in general, we need uh, learning methods to dynamically generating uh, corresponding match plans for each query. Reinforcement learning is a great answer for the challenges. Traditionally, 
It's carefully designed by experts according to their several years experience. We are the first ones to generalize it for all queries as a parameterized but discrete continuous hybrid action space PLNDP problem with zero prior knowledge and successfully apply the deep reinforcement learning in real web search product environment. Let's go more deeply into the problem formulation. For state, there are two parts. The first part is called time step dependent part, including some intermediate signals fetched from Bing system, such as inverted index position. Another part is called time step independent part, which is fixed at any time step in an episode. It contains query embeddings and some statistical information, like query length, popularity, and so on. In every time step, we use the state information to decide a metro type and a quota type for that metro. A complete match plan is consists of several metros and the stop action. Thus, uh, the action is composed of a discrete part of metro types and a continuous part for quotas. Notice that the, uh, the quota space is shared for all actions. It's very different from in the setting of PDQN and MPDQN that every discrete action has some continuous parameters. So we have a large action space and such formulation is overcomplicated, making the agent impossible to converge. Thus, ours only contain the discrete action space and a shared parameter space. The reward is a scalar function weighted by performance and latency. As for performance, we use the metric relevance score of top k return documents weighted by the decreasing weights, which are graded by the ranker model built by Bing's engineers. It is trained to approximate NDCG. As for latency, since execution time is noisy because of caching, we use index block sizes, which is IBA for short. It is constant in different external circumstances. Our environment is a wrapped inverted index server of Bing. Uh, there's always a gap between theory and practice. And when applying current reinforcement learning algorithms to our scene, we met several difficulties. One is complex action space, which combines discrete and continuous spaces and a huge number of actions. Therefore, reinforcement learning algorithms like DQN, TD3, SAC cannot meet our uh, cannot meet our requirements. And uh, another challenge is that the instability uh, in training due to the insufficient exploration of our action space, such as uh, PADTPG. So therefore, using PADTPG, we achieve much worse performance uh, than current production static handcrafted design. Uh, therefore, we need a new reinforcement learning algorithm to handle our scenario. So we also notice a sample deviation in traditional prioritized replay buffer. It causes poor performance of learning the value function uh, for some queries, and we'll discuss it later. Thus, to address these issues, we propose PASAC, which introduces the state-of-the-art reinforcement learning algorithm, SAC, to our parameterized action settings. In PASAC, the actor-critic framework is adopted. For actor, we optimized a stochastic policy of the complete action. The complete action are composed of discrete metros and continuous quotas. Meanwhile, we aim to maximize both entropies. For critic, the soft Q network estimates a joint soft Q value function for the complete action. Yeah, here are some implementation details for PSSE. For exploration, inspired by SSE, which uses an alpha to adjust temperature, we leverage double alpha tuning to control the different exploration rate at the disk create and continuous action spaces. Another detail is the recurrent state head. We apply dynamic LSTM to solve the partial observation issue. 
So for, for some further details, please refer to our paper and our uh, open source code here. So we further proposed Strat5 prioritized experience replay to address the skewed prioritizing issue. What is skewed prioritizing issue? Uh, experiences whose rewards are in certain ranges are more likely to be sampled, making agent behave poorly in some state subspaces. And we just want to make all the queries get sufficient training. So uh, I'll briefly introduce the two main innovations of SVR. So the first one is buffer stratifying. The replaying buffer is divided into several bins, or we call it strata, according to the reward ranges. So the same number of samples are sampled from each bin by important sampling. The second idea is that priority with TD error and policy loss. The basic idea behind it is that transactions with large improvement potential needs to be more likely to be sampled. So, okay, now we move on to the experiment part. So this section is organized by the following five questions, but uh, time is limited, so uh, I will just take a quick glance at it, and uh, you may pause here, and uh, we will just move on to the next slide. So to answer the question one and two, we have done some comparative experiments with the same condition on different reinforcement learning agent. So we text uh, the agent on the test split after every 5,000 episodes of training on the training set. In the metric of ARI, the baseline here uh, stands for the handcrafted rules in Bing. We can see PASCC agent apparently outperforms other state-of-the-art agent in both stability and efficiency are seen. Discretized methods like discrete SAC here and DQN uh, performed much the worse than the methods on parameterized action settings. So to answer the question three, we compare our methods with current production method. Results show that there is a significant reduction of index block successes with relevance almost on par, because manually defined match plans cannot flexibly control the quotas, and match plans generated by models are typically shorter than the production, because the production rules are generalized to all queries into a category, so leading to some redundancy rules for a single query. To answer the question 4, the, we did a, some ablation study on each of our components. So the result explicitly shows the superiority of each of our components. We also evaluate our agent in a broader context. Experiment shows that PASCC performs much better than PADTG on the two benchmarking games, which also has some uh, parameterized action settings. And uh, you know, uh, stratify sampling may fit better uh, in the environment with skewed prioritizing issue. So the first two results here are almost on par. Now here's a short summarization of our contribution. As time is limited, I will just take a quick glance at it. So we formulate the match plan generation task to the general. PAIO framework, we propose a novel algorithm PASSE. So we want to address the issue of uh, skewed prioritizing of PR. So we applied SPR in our scene. And uh, some experiments results show that our learned mesh plans significantly outperform the uh, production baselines in terms of resource saving. And our future works includes first uh, further optimize our uh, model reference time, and we have to come up with some uh, more delicate strategy in exploring the parameterized action space. Yeah. Okay, so that's the end of our presentation, and thank you for your careful listening. Goodbye.